we believe to be the, the sort of two to three things that the HR will need to do to really add business value as, as we come out of uh, the other side, hopefully, of the pandemic. Sure. Well, I think the first thing that they that they can do, that they'll need to do, <clears throat> and we, we talked about this at some length, so I won't reiterate it, is to figure out how to be trusted advisors. And I don't it just even mean strategic partners, right? But HR, I think, has the capability and potential to be trusted advisors to our businesses. And that means that when as a leader, I'm running into an issue, right? With hiring, with staffing my team, with employee motivation or retention, that there is someone I can go to to get insights and advice, not to do paperwork, you know, but to get real actionable insights that will allow me to make the best decision and that the decision is not being foisted upon me by somebody else. That's the key movement, I think, that HR needs to do to really, really add value. And I think HR, for all the reasons that we've talked about throughout this great conversation, is uniquely positioned to do. I think that, um, you know, as you fall out from that, if that if that's the major thing, um, what HR needs to step in, what, the first obvious place for HR to step in and help about that is about helping being that trusted advisor around managing a distributed remote workforce Um, because there are so many changes that we're starting to see and that we are going to continue to see as they accelerate as we try this great experiment of the hybrid remote flex office environment right and this means that because nobody has the answer, we're going to need to try a bunch of things out and see what works. And the solutions are going to be different for different teams that do different kinds of work. They're going to be different for organizations in different industries. They're going to be different for people in different roles. And the way, the best way to figure out like what is the right kind of model of constructing a team or do we have employees that are fully remote or they flex their schedules throughout the day or do we bring people on site in the office, you know, is through trying different scenarios out and collecting data about whether those scenarios work, how well they work to meet key objectives that we care about, and using those data to then create, you know, kind of policies for our various teams, and I don't mean formal, but informal, about, you know, what does this hybrid work environment look like? And every leader I talk to, right, in a, in a business is worried about this. They don't know what to do, right? And this is HR's moment to shine by helping collect and analyze the data, helping the, the, the businesses run these kinds of experiments and recognize that the world's going to consistently change and we're going to need to reevaluate and create you know, new models and new structures for this pretty regularly. And this is where HR can again become that trusted advisor that the pandemic, I think, is providing and will provide this unparalleled opportunity to accelerate this transition from HR to this trusted advisor role if, um, you know, if, if the HR organization can take advantage of it in the right way by partnering. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe via your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.